Welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Justin Peters. I hope that you and your family are doing well today. I want to thank you very much for joining me. A couple of weeks ago, there was a, a little bit of a dust up on social media about John MacArthur's nice watch. This is uh, this was begun by a tweet from Julie Roy's in which she uh, put a link to this Instagram account uh, entitled Profits in Watches, which is kind of, I, I, guess, I don't know if it's directly related to the Preachers and Sneakers, but there's a Preachers and Sneakers account that shows some of the extravagant clothing, shoes, shirts, jackets. Apparently T.D. Jakes even has like a, a merce, I guess, a man's purse or whatever. It's anyway, but kind of bizarre. But um, there's this account called Profits and Watches that shows some of the uh, very nice timepieces worn by a number of very prominent preachers. Now, for background information, uh, back on February 3rd, Julie Royce wrote an article entitled The Prosperous Lifestyle of America's Anti-Prosperity Gospel Preacher. And she talks about how MacArthur has three homes. Of course, he has his primary residence. Uh, then he has a home in Colorado, but that home in Colorado is actually uh, jointly owned between uh, five families, of course, MacArthur and his wife, Patricia, and then his four children and their families. It's so, uh, you know, you divvy that up <laughs> five different ways. It's really not that extravagant. And um, they have that as just to have a place for the whole family to get together uh, during the summer for a little while. So, but then his second home, and comically, Joy, Julie Roy said that um, his second home is, quote, just 11 miles from the beach. I'm sure when John MacArthur opens his window at night, the, the sound of the waves crashing onto the shore is practically deafening from 11 miles away. <laughs> so, uh, Julie Royce has been going after MacArthur for quite a while, and this is the latest little thing. And so, uh, uh, background information, this past weekend, uh, Phil Johnson was speaking at Kootenai Community Church doing a seminar on Charles Spurgeon, and we were all having dinner together one night, and the issue of John MacArthur's nice watch came up at the dinner table. And so uh, he gave me the real story behind John MacArthur's nice watch, and I asked him if he would come on to the program. And Phil, I am sorry for such a long introduction there. Sorry to keep you waiting, but thank you very much for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me, Justin. It's always good to be with you. Yeah, it's great to have you, Phil. Great to have you. We really enjoyed the conference this past weekend. That was fun. It was. It was. Uh, uh, I learned a lot about Charles Spurgeon. Um, maybe one of these days I'll have you back on and get you to tell about the story of six-year-old Charles Spurgeon going into the <laughs> into the pub. But um, thank you for joining me, Phil. So, Phil, that night at uh, Sweet Lou's, we were having dinner and something came up about John MacArthur's nice watch and tell us what's the scoop with that. Oh, and yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, I missed the whole controversy with uh, Julie Royce. I saw references to it from other people, but I, you know, she blocked me a long time ago and I just stopped paying attention to her. So I'm not sure what her complaint was. I haven't read her article if she wrote it or listened to whatever podcast she was dealing with it on. I don't know, but here's the background on that watch. That was a gift to John MacArthur from the staff at Grace to You uh, about two years ago, I think it was. Yeah, it was two years ago because he celebrated his 50th anniversary as pastor of Grace Community Church. His first Sunday at Grace sort of is the marking point for the beginning of Grace to You. It was a, it was the first first recording we have of his sermons was that Sunday. Uh, that was 1969 in February, and later that year, as you know, the astronauts, American astronauts, landed on the moon for the first time. Right. Uh, and so uh, there's a watch that celebrates that. So it's linked to 1969. It's, uh, I, I forget, I think it's Omega watches or something like that, that uh, and they call it the moon watch. Uh, it's the watch, it's a replica of the watch that the astronauts wore to the moon in 1969. And since it had that connection with 1969, that's what we chose to give him for his anniversary gift. Uh, it cost us $5,000. So, yeah. which is an expensive, it's a more expensive watch than I would wear. 
but uh, but okay, it's his 50th anniversary. That averages out to $100 a, a year for his his pastoral work and uh, his work on behalf of Grace to You. So we felt it's a worthy gift. It had symbolic value. We gave it to him, yeah. uh, not realizing that uh, it would be offensive to Julie Royce, but I don't regret that. Yeah, nor should you, nor should you. And, and MacArthur has always had a bit of a, an interest in space, I guess you could say. Uh, uh, yeah, we have uh, one of the American astronauts is a board member uh, here at Grace to You. And uh, another active astronaut is uh, one of our one of our good friends and and a participant in our ministry. So you know we've always had a sort of connection with uh, astronauts. And our managing director Jay Flowers is a space and aircraft aficionado. So huh. he's also the one tasked with you know picking out special gifts like that. He's really good at it. So uh, it was his choice to get that watch. I affirmed it. Uh, the rest of our staff thought it was a good idea. And in fact, so far, everybody's thought it was a good idea, except for Julie Royce. <laughs> but I would add that to a stack of bad opinions that she's expressed, and uh, it doesn't bother me a bit. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and that's not a, a, as you said, average it out for 50 years, $100 a year. And um, MacArthur began in February of 69. I believe the moon landing was July of 69. I don't remember the date, maybe July 11th, something like that. And, and um, Jeff Williams did a presentation at the Truth Matters conference a couple of years ago. That was very good. He showed some video footage of um, that he took from the International Space Station. Yeah, he has the record. Jeff Williams has the record, uh, has a couple of records. One is, I think he's taken more photographs from uh, outer space than any other living individual. And in fact, his record may never be broken. And uh, he's also, I think he still holds the record for the most time spent in space. He's done two stints on the, uh, uh, on the uh, International Space Station and also went up once in a shorter mission on the shuttle. So he spent more time in space than any other American man. I think one of the female astronauts has actually broken his record of time in the space station by a few days. So, hmm. uh, but nevertheless, uh, we're, we, we love Jeff and uh, his influence on our ministry. And yeah, it just seemed like the, the moon watch was an appropriate thing to give John. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very appropriate. And, um, and two, MacArthur, I mean, Julie Roy's, in fact, uh, someone pushed back on her. In fact, before we began the interview, I said that even some people who are not particularly fans of John MacArthur pushed back against Julie Roy's because of the petty nature of this. And uh, Julie Roy said, quote, in response to one of these people who pushed back against her, quote, no one objected when I tweeted preachers and sneakers exposing the expensive shoes of folks like Stephen Furtick and John Gray. But when I do the same with MacArthur, there's backlash. Why the double standard? Yeah. You know, I haven't cheered the uh, preachers and sneakers website. I'm amused by it. And I think they make a lot of good points, but the Stephen Furtick thing uh, in particular, I remember that, uh, there's a picture of him wearing, as I, as I recall, there are white sneakers that cost about $800, designer speak sneakers uh, by, by a company that I'd never even heard of. It was like Christian Laboutin or something like that. So I looked it up, and sure enough, those are $800 sneakers, which is, again, more than I would pay for sneakers. But I have to congratulate him on his restraint. That same company makes a pair of high-top lace sneakers that sell for $3,300. So, uh, you know, you could be more extravagant than that. But all that is to say, I, I think there's a pettiness even in that, in this. If your lead problem with Stephen Furtick is that he spends too much money on his shoes, you're not really paying very close attention. Right. Because his teaching and, and uh, his character are significant issues. And, and the shoes, maybe they're part of it in the sense that uh, – that's one aspect of his pathological obsession with the badges of earthly wealth and fame and, you know, evidence of the love of money. But if you can't distinguish that from, 
you know, a man who wears a, a watch that was gifted to him, who's been faithful in ministry for 50 years and preached through every verse of the New Testament. Uh, and you can't make any distinction between the two. And apparently, based on the thing you just read, she sees an absolute equivalence there. Yeah. Uh, I would just say that says more about her lack of discernment than it does about the, either of the people that she's criticizing. Yeah, indeed. And, and not to mention, I think the biggest issue here and the, what she doesn't seem to realize is that almost all of these preachers that are featured on this preachers and sneakers and profit and watches, they're prosperity preachers. Their theology is give to get, sow to reap, give me money. God will bless you. Give me money. God will get you out of debt. Give me money. God will heal you of cancer. And that's how they have accrued their fabulous wealth. Okay, dear ones, I took some screenshots from the profits and watches. I thought you might be interested in some of these. This, this is by no means exhaustive. This is just a kind of a, a random sampling. But Rod Parsley has a $3,000 watch. Jensen Franklin, which a lot of people don't think is word of faith, but he is, uh, 2892 Brian Houston, the pastor of Hillsong Church, 8195 And by the way, Hillsong is a theological cult. Uh, his wife, Bobby Houston, 5699 so lagging a little behind her husband. Uh, Stephen Furtick, $8,500, let's call it. Uh, Stephen Furtick, as Phil said, the biggest concern with him is not what he wears, but what he teaches. Speaking of which, T.D. Jakes is Stephen Furtick's idol in ministry. Uh, Stephen Furtick looks up to T.D. Jakes more than anyone else. And T.D. Jakes here is sporting a $39,500 timepiece. And kind of like with Furtick, the biggest concern with T.D. Jakes is not what he wears, it's what he teaches. He is a modalist. He denies the Trinity. Serial adulterer and disgraced pastor John Gray, but who is still in the pulpit, sadly. Here he is with a $12,500 watch. David Crank $33,989. David Crank is, is truly one of the <laughs> one of the worst of the worst. Uh, if there's anyone more arrogant than Stephen Furtick, it would it would be David Crank. Just unreal. Jesse Duplantis, here's a couple of watches, $88.50, $10,135. Creflo Dollar, undoubtedly the most aptly named of the prosperity preachers. Uh, we'll call this watch ten thousand dollars. I mean, that's funny. Two cents, <laughs> two cents shy of ten thousand, but whatever. And uh, tangentially here, what preacher poses like that? I mean, he looks like he's getting ready to uh, do a photo shoot for the cover of GQ. I mean, who does that? Uh, no true preacher. I, I can say that. That is. Uh, uh, and while I'm thinking about it. If you, if you notice all of the individuals that I've been mentioning here, I think I can safely say all of them, when you look at the books that they've written, every single one of them has a big picture of himself or herself on the cover. Every one of them. Now, John MacArthur has written, I don't know, 65, 70 books at least, thereabouts. And on nary a one of them will you find a picture of himself. I think the only book that has a picture of John MacArthur on the cover of it would be his biography that was written by Ian Murray was not of course written by John. So, uh, that's a pretty good rule of thumb. If you're looking through the bookstore or looking through a, a Christian book magazine or whatever, and, uh, you happen to notice that on the cover of all the books written by said author is a big picture of himself or herself. Uh, that's a pretty good indication that you probably shouldn't be reading that book. But I digress. Uh, and here's one for twenty-five grand: Joseph Prince, who is also a word of faith, sixty-four ninety-nine; Bill Johnson, uh, thirty-seven sixty; uh, and Pastor Kim Jones Pottier. Uh, Pastor Kim. Now, there's your first problem. <laughs> there's your first problem. Uh, a female pastor. That's that's another video maybe for another time. But um, 9378, John Hagee. A lot of people don't think John Hagee is word of faith. He absolutely is. 13,400. Uh, here's Kenneth Copeland. And uh, this is a picture of Kenneth Copeland with Bill Johnson. Now, Kenneth Copeland is more 
classic word of faith. Bill Johnson is more classic New Apostolic Reformation, but you see these two movements, even though there's a bit of a distinction, they're just melding together and becoming one heretical theological stream. And they cross-pollinate with each other and speak at each other's conferences. But here's a watch, uh, 3699. Here's another picture, 4375. Here's another picture, 9500. Now, uh, a lot of these pastors, uh, quote unquote, that are featured on this website, they have multiple, multiple pictures. So it's not just one nice watch, uh, as you're seeing, I think. And here's one for thirteen four ninety nine. So he's got a lot of money in wrist watches, uh, not to mention his private jets and biplanes that he flies around just for fun and ski boats and all that kind of stuff. I've actually sat in Kenneth Copeland's private jet before. Maybe I'll tell that story sometime. Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn, uh, 15950 And here's one for just under $22,000. Ed Young Jr. Now, Ed Young Jr. is theoretically not word of faith, uh, but Ed Young Jr. is uh, kind of one of the worst of the worst when it comes to the seeker-sensitive approach to doing church, the market-driven approach to church. Ed Young Jr. is uh, honestly, I, I don't, he, I don't know how a, someone who has been saved more than about 20 minutes could sit under his preaching. It's just horrific. But here's one for 17,399. Here's one for 15,795. Now <laughs> he should be fined 15,795 dollars for wearing those glasses. And uh, here's another watch, 38,198. So, I mean, friends, add that up. That is, uh, I mean, my goodness, you, you're talking multiple, multiple, multiple tens of thousands of dollars just in watches. So a lot of people don't think of Ed Young Jr. as a prosperity preacher, but um, and Rodney Howard Brown, 5925, 23845, and Guillermo Maldonado, I must say, he's probably, at least from what I can tell from this website, he's probably got the most money in um, timepieces. I actually went to his church several years ago and um, called out some of the staff in the bookstore as false prophets. I uh, accused them of faking signs and wonders, which they did. Again, another video. But here's Guillermo Maldonado, 20. Thousand three ninety seven, twenty four two fifty thirty nine thousand five twenty fifty thousand nine ninety nine, and then the most expensive watch, at least that I saw, seventy four thousand five hundred dollars. I I didn't even know until like I was today years old when I learned that they even made watches that cost that much money. I, I didn't even know such a thing existed. And maybe there's some that cost more, I don't know. So uh, anyway, when you when you look at all this, that, um, that $5,000 watch that was given as a gift, 50 year anniversary gift, no less, to John MacArthur, um, yeah, kind of pales in comparison, does it not? Um, yeah, you have to remember that what Scripture says is is the root of all evil is the love of money. Right. It's a, it, it, and what it criticizes in false teachers is greed, the idea of gathering things for themselves and reveling in the badges of wealth and prosperity, and and uh, that's what's that's what's evil. And you have to make a distinction between a preacher who's only in, in it for the money and someone like say Charles Spurgeon, we talked about him at length this weekend. Yeah. And one of the issues he dealt with was he had a considerable uh, income from the sale of his sermons the sale of his books. Uh, and, and nobody knew what he did with that money because it wouldn't have been righteous for him to, you know, blow a trumpet every time he gave alms, but he started right. an orphanage and a pastor school. And what people didn't know until after long after he was dead was that he also single-handedly supported a number of widows. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. so he was a very charitable man. The only thing Spurgeon ever spent money on for himself was books. <laughs> and he had, he had a considerable library that was worth quite a lot of money, but this isn't the sort of extravagance that scripture condemns. Uh, right. Scripture doesn't condemn Job or Abraham for their wealth or Joseph in the Old Testament. 
these are men who lived right. in wealth and scripture doesn't condemn them for it. Uh, what scripture condemns again is the love of money. And yeah. I've, I've been in and in around John MacArthur and his family for 40 years and no one could righteously accuse him of being afflicted with the love of money. I also happen to know privately what he does with a lot of, a lot of the resources he gets from book royalties and, and um, you know, his various salaries. And uh, again, no one could condemn him for his stewardship. He'll answer to the Lord for that. And I think the Lord will say, well done. Yeah, indeed. I do as well. And I, and I hear that from people who know him. I don't know him, of course, nearly like you do and others do, but I, I know people who do know him that well. And I've spent time with him and, and to a man, every single person, every single man that I've been around who knows John MacArthur well, they all say that about him, that he's very generous. He's I, very- I've never known anyone more generous than he is or more tenderhearted in the way he helps people in need. Uh, and again, I, I don't want to rob him of his heavenly reward by detailing any of that. You'll just have to take my word for it. And yeah, you know, if, if, yeah. if you, if you still want to keep throwing criticisms at, criticisms at him over the internet, then, uh, then you'll answer to Lord for that. So. Indeed. Absolutely. All right. And and this was a gift, right? It's not like John went out and bought it for What was he supposed to do? Give it back. I mean, it, you know. so you could sell it on eBay and then donate the money to yeah. what was it? Judas said, cause this was Judas's attitude. Uh, remember when the woman uh, anointed Jesus feet with an expensive yeah. vial of, perfume it, it was judas who raised a question right. about the propriety of that right uh, so you know that's that has long been the, the sort of complaint that miscreants use as mm-hmm. well so indeed good point good point all right well phil thank you for your time brother i appreciate it hey always good to see you let's uh, let's talk about something really good next time okay We'll do it. All right. All we right. will do that. All Love right. you, brother. Love you too, Phil. God bless you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, dear ones. Well, uh, I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, not that any of you watching had any serious questions about MacArthur's integrity, but you know, these things come up and, uh, and, uh, then I hear the true story and I, I thought it might be helpful for you to know it as well. So, And as a closing note, just in case uh, Julie Roy's or anyone else was wondering what kind of watch I have, uh, this is my profit watch, I guess you could say. This is a Citizen timepiece, uh, EcoDrive, Skyhawk, and then it says WR200. I don't know what the WR stands for. Wide receiver, probably not that. But uh, this, this watch is worth, I think, between five and $600. Uh, But this watch, like MacArthur's watch, was a gift to me. In fact, it was a very special gift because uh, my wife, Kathy, got me this watch as a wedding gift uh, just about 11 years or so ago now. And you know what? Um, I wouldn't trade this watch for Guillermo Maldonado's $70,000 watch, even if it was offered to me. I would turn it down because gifts mean something. They have sentimental value. Um, this watch has sentimental value to me because of the one who gave it to me. And MacArthur's watch is the same way. It's a sad state of affairs when people want to go after uh, faithful men in the ministry to make a name for themselves. Um, it's, that's a pretty sad state of affairs. Now, to be sure, there are a lot of charlatans and wolves out there, obviously, given uh, that for which I'm most well known and what I do. Uh, sure there are, but... John MacArthur ain't one of them. Okay, dear friends, thank you very much for watching. Until our next time together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with you all. I got a slight problem here. I don't have the 4250. (laughs) Do you have $17 and a good watch? No, I don't. I have... uh... I have two dollars huh. and uh, and a Casio. Mm, I'm gonna have to say good night.